Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, creator of the Dot Destroyer book, and I'd like to go over a very, very important topic with you for the DAT, OAT, and MCAT exam. The three germ layers, as you know, are the endoderm, mesoderm, and the ectoderm. Now, these three germ layers are going to be in place at the end of gastrulation. And after they're laid down, the continued progress of embryonic development depends on signals called embryonic inductions, where one tissue can influence the development of another. Let's go through these germ layers and make sure you know each one of these and, and what they give rise to. That's the most commonly asked question. The endoderm gives rise to thyroid, thymus, parathyroid, liver, pancreas, and the epithelial lining of the GI tract, reproductive systems, urinary bladder, and lining of the urethra. The mesoderm, I want you to think connective tissues. It's a short, bad question. Bone, cartilage, dermis, kidneys, gonads, which include the testes in the male and the ovaries in the female, includes muscles, the notochord, the spleen, the heart. By the way, the heart, um, is the first functional organ to develop. It actually beats and pumps around three weeks after fertilization. The adrenal cortex, dangerous question. That's gonna go into mesoderm. Adrenal cortex, if you remember, was responsible for making the mineralocorticoids such as aldosterone, which we all remember is involving the absorption, the reabsorption of sodium. Lymph vessels are also mesodermal derived. Then the ectoderm, that was the epidermis, the enamel of the teeth, nervous system, cornea and lens of the eye, the adrenal medulla, sweat glands, hair follicles, and pituitary gland. Now, the adrenal medulla, um, if you remember, it gives rise to what we call the catecholamines. Those catecholamines include epinephrine, norepinephrine, which are very, very similar in structure. Um, norepinephrine has no methyl. Um, I had a shirt on the other day um, and had norepinephrine on it, but I um, thought I had it on this one, but I didn't. So we have epinephrine, norepinephrine, and a small amount of dopamine. Most of the dopamine is made in an area of the brain. Um, we'll go into that at another time but also a small percentage is in the adrenal medulla. Now these catecholamines, which is a short sure bad question, you're gonna know the three examples, are actually derived from a molecule called catechol. Catechol is nothing more than O-dihydroxybenzene, meaning ortho, dihydroxybenzene. Now as you can see, I gave you an example, um, is that these species, these molecules, are derived from an amino acid called tyrosine. Now, tyrosine, as you can see, is going to form dopamine. And as you can see, you can see the catechol um, structure. Now, in the presence of dopamine, and here it's called dopamine beta monooxygenase and oxygen, we add an oxygen and we produce this molecule, and this is the minus form of norepinephrine. So what I've done is simply add in an oxygen. Now, you gotta be a little careful, because notice I created only one particular stereoisomer. Um, we, I would call this enantiospecific. Now, what do I mean in organic chemistry when we said enantiospecific? Meaning I'm only making one enantiomer. Now, you might say, how is this possible? The enzyme, this monooxygenase, creates a chiral environment. If you remember, um, an enzyme has shape, and because it has shape, that means it's gonna fit, or the molecule is gonna fit into the enzyme in a proper way. So therefore, when we do this reaction, we're doing it from one particular face on the enzyme. Now, if you remember the kahn ingold prelog rules from organic chemistry, also we call them the CIP rules. If I ask you, um, Instead of saying minus norepinephrine, would it be the R or the S? Well, what would I do here? Well, here's our chiral carbon right here. We have this is one and the H is four. Now, this is a C and this is a C, but this is a C that has two H's and an N. 
where this has just all C's. So therefore the N comes first, way more than the O's, which are too far over. So that would mean that this would be two, this would be three. So when you come around, this is an R. What I would recommend is maybe to redo the tape when I don't have all the writing on it. And you make sure you confirm that this is the R in Yantima. So only the R is the only stereo isomer that has functionality. So there you have it. You wanna make sure you not only know all the germ layers, you wanna have a good idea of what the catecholamines are, the examples where the catecholamines are produced, and of course, to have a little understanding of when we modify um, a molecule, whether here it's with the oxygenase, we produce one stereoisomer, and the reason why only one is produced, it has to do with the chiral environment that's created by the um, enzyme specificity of that binding pocket. And then finally, notice negative in R, if you remembered, has no relationship. Some minuses are R's, some minuses are S's, so it would all depend. But you make sure you understand at the end of this problem how to create an R molecule and how I came up with an R for that. I hope that helps on a really solid type of question where we combined um, all the principles of bio with a little bit of the biochemistry and then kicked it home with organic. I like questions like this where we got to have multiple concepts. The MCAT will have questions just like this where you got to think where the, or, 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 where the section on the OAT and the DAT will have more, you either know it or you don't, and the question ends. But on the MCAT, it's more like they keep going with a whole bunch of questions. All right, I hope that helps on a video that was packed with a lot of information. All right, good day to you. Bye-bye.